we saw a flurry of, we were the worst performing market last year. Yep. Uh, January, February, we saw a good rush of foreign money coming in, probably boosted more by the fact that our valuations looked attractive because we had gone down 40% in dollar terms in 2011 and plus the liquidity that got. Uh, yeah. From what I hear you say, Adrian, if, if things don't change, could we see a stop or even a pullback out of it? Well, we've definitely seen a stop. I mean, you look at trading sure, we've volumes. already seen that, yeah. right. Um, and I, I think India runs the risk that we start to see more major FII outflows if this tax issue is not dealt with. And certainly with. not fresh inflows. Certainly not fresh inflows. Um, which, you know, is clearly frustrating because this economy needs it, particularly with this high oil price. Mm. Uh, and remember that within the economy, there are a lot of domestic challenges at this point in time. You know, trying to get the growth price stability uh, trade-off correct is still a struggle for policymakers at this point in time. So you wouldn't be buying into India right now at all? Um, I, I would be extremely selective. I mean, if you think about what are the global themes at this point in time, it's that the U.S. economy is doing better than people That's expected. Right. So Indian IT would be a good play on that, and it's also a hedge against um, you know, a weakening currency. Uh, I think the outlook for domestic demand um, is rather poor at this point in time, uh, and it looks like the GDP estimates are really just too high. Uh, and what we probably saw was in the early uh, parts of this year, a bit of prepayment of consumption as people expected excise duties to go up in the budget. And so I think the April and May data may show some meaningful weakness, which will be bad for some of the, the domestic uh, consumption sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look at um, the engineering construction companies, they're certainly very cheap, uh, and maybe there's some hope there. Uh, but, you know, I have to say with the uncertainty that we've got on the policy front, uh, the chances of businesses making but, but big But what you're saying is even if it's cheap, it has to justify more than 15% up because that's Absolutely. the tax I'm going to pay. Well, so you, even no, if it would have normally been attractive for you to invest, you're saying right now this is the sword hanging on my head. Yeah, it's not. You have to give 15% return in excess sure, of exactly. other markets Absolutely. rather than. Yeah. And, and that may not be yet a situation, even if the stock is cheap. Well, that, that, I think there's no catalyst at this point in time for these cheap engineering companies to perform well. You probably have to go way down, another yeah. 5,000 points on the Sensex for, to justify. So I think the way you hedge yourself here is you own financials. So if the economy is weak, then the RBI cuts the CRR further. Are you hopeful of that? I know that... I, uh, I think, it is, I think it, that's what's going to be happening. Just a 25 basis point. That's the consensus view. Do well, you think more needs to be done, Adrian? Uh, Anecdotally, you know, when our analysts are out speaking to companies, when they're looking at footfalls in the shopping malls, it looks weak, this economy. Yeah. And so I think the consensus is too high on the GDP growth forecasts, and that's giving them this view that you only get 25 basis points in CRR. It's more likely that the GDP numbers get revised down, and then people expect a larger policy response to that. Mm. But do you believe the RBI now needs to start cutting more? Um, I, th I think that's right, that they do need to do that. Mm. Because uh, 2011, you talked about the drivers in India uh, for the market was the high inflation. And you do make a point somewhere else in your report that it's always been very difficult to predict inflation when it comes to emerging markets. And I'm sure India is one yeah. of them. Uh, it's always taken by surprise. And of course, uh, the second bit that you talked of was the government's policy paralysis. We've, we've discussed a bit of that. Of course, we've picked on one particular issue. But even beyond that one issue of taxation, uh, things not really moving the way you would have expected them to move. Yeah, I, I, one thing I would, though, say about... So both the fears of 2011 yeah. still yeah. remain. Both the issues of 2011 still actually remain. I, I'm not too worried about the inflation issue. Just simply that the economy will be, is being weak, you'll get less pricing power, and inflation will come off. Um, I think the, if I look at the global oil markets, the risk to me looks as if it's on the downside with oil coming off this quarter. Uh, if we can combine that with rupee stability, uh, then I, I think the message on inflation will be okay. If you look at the broader agricultural index, it's been holding steady for the last couple of months. Uh, so a weak economy without the commodity input of higher inflation that we saw at the beginning of 2011, I think will give you better inflation numbers. Uh, so I'm okay with that. Policy paralysis, absolutely. But that's what every investor talks about at this point in time. So it, it may seem slightly wishful, but 
it's difficult to disappoint the market any more on po policy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, this issue on taxation we've already discussed at some length. Right, yeah. That it, that is a structural issue. That is people deciding, look, let's not bother with India. Uh, but I, I think with regards to policy, the expectations are so low uh, that I don't see it as a further risk to the market. Mm. Uh, and the yeah. budget wasn't that bad as a budget. You, know, you believe that? Yeah, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Mm. Um, I, I think it, you know, it was relatively Except pragmatic. for this tax bit. The tax issue, yeah. Other than that, you believe that it was actually, when you say not that bad means what? Wasn't good. But well, it wasn't okay. that fiscally imprudent that people were perhaps expecting it, being, mm. you know, expecting it to be a little bit more political mm. um, uh, you know, ahead of the elections. You've talked of a, this is of course a 28th March uh, report of yours, but you've talked of a Sensex, a year-end target of 19,000. We are in any case not very far away from that 2,000, but from yeah. what I hear you articulate in terms of the situation on the ground, we could actually probably be in a totally reverse direction according to you. And even yeah. 19,000 might seem very big. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I, was th I always advise clients when we talk about price targets for stocks or index targets, you know, one sits there and you justify it by fair values and, you know, historic trading ranges. But what's much more important is to think about the current trajectory of markets. Um, and I think the trajectory of markets for this quarter is probably likely to be lower globally. Um, and, you know, if we begin to see a stabilization once more in the U.S. employment data or Spanish bond yields come off, uh, then the, the rally will reassert itself. And in India, you know, what we need to look for is for inflation to come down a bit further, for the RBI to cut more than expectation, and that might provide a floor on the market. And when you, you get to that level and you realize that the fair value is 19,000, then you can see the sort of potential return. So that's the smart way to use index targets, not to assume that we're here and we're going to go to there with a straight line. Mm. That shows a great deal of ignorance about the way markets perform. But, but you're saying even if these two things happen, which you talk of, the best case according to you is we'll get to 19,000. No, 19,000 is merely, as I said, a fair value estimate. If you look at the standard deviations of valuations in India, you'll be talking about two and a half PE points. You know, that's a five PE point move. That's a big percentage. Mm. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I've always, you know, think of as a strategist, you know, it's like you tell actors not to work with, you know, children or animals as a strategist don't work with children, animals or index targets. <laughs> but, uh, you know, understand what a fair value is. Mm. It's assumption that you revert to a mean, which is a reasonable assumption over a multiple year or period. Mm. Uh, you're much better off to be able to articulate whether the PE multiple will be going up or down over the next couple of months based upon some of the key macro factors. Mm. And unfortunately, I think for now, PE multiples will be drifting lower as we you know, partly it's a vacuum issue with issues uh, with India because FIs don't really want to buy in with the uncertainty. But it's also a function of uncertainty over policy, uncertainty over the trend of inflation and growth. Mm -hmm. And I think the next macro data points that are going to come out that will disappoint will be the growth macro points. And that may then, you know, the market comes off on that, you get a revision down of earnings, and then the market says, okay, we're going to get a policy response here, and then the market will be rallying as earnings are being revised down because it's focusing on the policy response. Right. Uh, you talked interestingly about IT, that how the Indian IT uh, sector, you are viewing it as more from a global uh, dis, you know, uh, consumption uh, uh, bit. Uh, as more specifically to India, you've talked about uh, the fact that your underweight consumption given a demanding base effect and you expect adverse impact of government's attempts to consolidate its fiscal position. You're overweight, private sector banks, industrials, and telecom. Could you articulate a bit on that? Yeah, so I, I was already talking a little bit about how we expect you know, consumption to, to disappoint, that we're going to see some pre and then weakness in consumption data. We're seeing maybe in the two-wheeler companies that inventories are rising at this point in time. Uh, and the biggest part of the consumption sector and consumer discretionary tends to be autos and two-wheelers. Um, I think for the industrials, which is when I was already talking about the engineering companies, which have become very cheap, as people have said, look, we're not going to see any capex, mm. uh, that that provides a sort of bit of optionality. Uh, we've got a much better base effect. If we think about when the 2G scam uh, was first revealed, that's more than 12 months ago, actually sort of 18, 
20 odd months ago. So the base effect of CapEx is extremely favorable in that we've had very weak CapEx. So, you know, cheap valuations, weak, ba a good base effect. Maybe there's a bit of upside surprise there. I highlighted that in that the economy's weak, you get a response through cutting in interest rates and that should benefit the financials. Uh, so this is why we're sort of running this type of strategy at this point in time. And you are, uh, you sound extremely bearish on India right now. Look, I, you know, I'm a long-term bull. I know you India. love India. I love India. I long-term long bull. India, but you seem fairly uh, bearish about the way things have panned out in the last month or two. A absolutely. I mean, I, I think this this whole tax issue mm. is it couldn't have come at a worse time. The, the other thing you, we need to understand here and is that emerging markets as an asset class is being questioned by international investors. You know, the U.S. equity market is performing well. The Japanese equity market is performing well. Certain sectors in Europe are doing well. And money moves. And the source of capital is coming out of the United States and Europe in terms of equity capital. And you need to give them a higher return to justify them taking that cross-border risk. And emerging markets are not doing that. You know, we have a lot of uncertainty about the Chinese economy. You know, I, I see the Chinese economy having a very wide range of outcomes this year. It is possible that we get a big policy response and the economy is fine, but it's also possible that this economy has hit a tipping point and that growth is going to be meaningfully slower as we see the effects of what's going on in the property market playing out in the economy. And we're advising clients to sort of manage that risk. This is why the valuations in China, you know, less than nine times forward earnings, you know, significantly cheaper than India at this point in time. You know, and then when I look at Brazil, Brazil matters what's going on in China. Uh, and so Brazilian materials is a very large sector. Um, and obviously Russia, a big play on energy and materials as well. So trying to persuade people to buy emerging markets at the moment is a challenge. And within and, that... To convince them to buy India is a bigger challenge. Is that even, what you're saying? Even bigger challenge because of the policy risk. You know, you phone up a client and you say, look, there's been this change. The first question, is it retrospective? Mm. You, know, that, that, you know, they wouldn't be asking that anywhere else. You know, you would, don't normally get policy that is retrospective. Um, and so let's get over this complacency. You need to attract international capital. You need to give them a policy framework that is clear. You need to manage inflation and growth in a consistent way. You need to provide a tax structure that is the same as what's available in other countries. Then India will be in a better position to attract capital. Uh, um, you know, one thing we also got to remember here is that the Indian economy grows despite it's not government, not because it's government. I think it's only really in China that maybe we have an economy that grows because of its government. Uh, you know, India has great entrepreneurs, a very hard-working population is used to a high cost of capital, uh, which then can offer you quite a high return as an investor. Mm. But we need to sort out some basic issues, which after 19 years of looking in India, it's kind of disappointing we haven't sorted out yet. It's been a pleasure talking to Adrian, and I do okay. hope that for your and our market's sake, your love for India remains. Thank okay, you very thanks. much for talking to you.